Wow. Check this out. Just opened this, got delivered to work. This is a book that's been sent to me by John Calway. Apparently, John, you watched this channel. Maybe not the vlogs, but you've been enjoying the anatomy. And um, this is fantastic. It's a book that John's written full of illustrations, like a page of illustration, page of text, explaining where words have come from for anatomical structures in beautiful style and beautiful drawings too. This is incredible. The human, the human body's cabinet of etymological curiosities. This is wonderful. Thank you, John. I love this. Chris is gonna love this too because um, I think he gave a talk a couple of years ago about um, exactly this sort of thing. This area behind us, um, it's tidal, it's, it's tidal salt marsh and there's a sea wall here that used to protect that area and it got, it got broken how many years ago? Um, at least six, seven. And I walked here when I did the gower walk. And you couldn't get it, it, that it couldn't way. Get, it would, I think it had just been done then, didn't it? Not long off, yeah, not long before that, I think, because there was no signposts. We didn't realise until we got all the way there. That's <laughs> all the way it around the long again. Route, right? <laughs> but it was decided not to repair it and to let the seawater get in and restore that salt marsh to how it used to be, which is controversial at the time, but um, which is why you see so many dead trees down there. But the wildlife has uh, really responded and it has started to go back to how it was. and. It's, um, yeah, it's changing, it's reverting. So this is salt marsh, right? These are the, these are the salt marsh sheep. They I taste even better because they graze on the salt marsh. Me. This is like more normal whales. And you've seen some very sunny days recently. Um, it's more usually gray or raining. Wales is famous for it. But um, I've had another busy, stressful week. Kim's had another stressful week as well, just busy making things and trying to get stuff done. And you've got to recognise when you've kind of had prolonged stress levels and you know there's always work that can be done there's always something you can do but at some point you've got to say right i'm going to take a time out now so i got up this morning got all my jobs done a little bit early uh, so that we could go for a nice easy relaxing walk this afternoon we've been raising kids for the last 18 years which hasn't Shall we going to go that way or that way Just at mine. Oh, let's go wider which hasn't put a complete hold on our adventures, but we've got... It's been a different oh, adventure. Yeah, it's all part of it, isn't it? Um, but we've got, I was saying the other day, enough like pocket adventures, big adventures, stored up, ready to go, in the backs of our minds to keep us busy. But not you know. so far back, mind. <laughs> They're not too far back in the back of my mind. They're kind of ah, there, waiting right. to go. <laughs> and walking is definitely one of them. Um, <laughs> I was looking at the Cambrian Way the other day, which is across Wales. We want to walk the Wales Coastal Path, we want to walk the Pembrokeshire Coastal Path. I also want to walk some of the big mountain European trails. There are so many big trails in Europe. I want to walk the Cape Roth Trail, I want to walk the, <laughs> the PCT. <laughs> John's book uh, prompted me uh, to talk about something I've been meaning to talk about for a while, which is pronunciation of anatomical terms, because uh, I tend to play with words, and it's not that my pronunciation is bad, I think I do quite a good job, because I give you multiple pronunciations, because what I'm trying to do is to prepare you so that when you're I don't know, working clinically or whatever, talking to other people about anatomy, you recognise all those different pronunciations, right? Um, and I might use a particular flavour. Um, I, I, we've got like 200 clinical teachers on our books in anatomy teaching at Swansea. 
and I know that they pronounce things a little bit differently, a little bit similarly. So I'm trying to make it easier for you so when you're working with those people and they say a strange word, you don't think, oh, what's he talking about? But you've actually heard it before and it triggers something, right? Um, but the thing is, with pronunciation, it varies around the world. I mean, if you think about English, us, Ameri us British and Americans can't even agree on how to pronounce tomato or aluminum. How do you take a whole letter out of a word? Um, so the same thing applies to anatomical terms, not too surprisingly. And what makes it even worse is these anatomical terms, while we've tried to <laughs> make new right? words for things, yeah, while we try to make new words for things, we've used ancient Greek and Latin, so two languages that haven't been spoken out loud for thousands of years. So who knows what those words really sounded like. And then we've made up new words from those ancient words. So no wonder we're in a little bit of a pickle. When I ran all the way around the Gower, I did, I ran all the way out to that lighthouse. I had to get here as the tide was going out so I could run out to the lighthouse safely. So I had to plan it all, I had to leave at a certain time to get here at a certain time, at a certain time of year on a certain day, right? <coughs> all right, you're going in my bag. We'll continue this at home. <sighs> what was I saying? Um, Latin and stuff. Yeah, so I'm, um, I did German in school, and I'm brushing up on my German. You know, future adventures in mind, like going back to Austria and Germany and that sort of thing. And of course, that keeps chucking words at me and a series of letters to help me with my pronunciation, like S-C-H. So in German, sh, you know. Uh, but of course, then when we, I've sat on my ischium, so the, pel the pelvis bone is made up of three bones on each side, the pubis, the ischium, and the ilium. And I'm sat on my ischial tuberosities, except whilst that is the German sound, ischial, S-C-H, in, well, in, in Neo-Latin or Modern Latin, S-C-H should probably be sk, so I'm sat on my ischium, but, Everybody I teach with and work with, all the surgeons that talk about their ischiums and other people's ischiums, say ischium. It's more fun outside. Let's change the weather back to good weather and go back outside and continue this, shall we? favourite anatomy teachers from when I was studying anatomy the first time, Mike Benjamin, um, he pronounced words like microscope. So again we had multiple teachers who pronounced things in different ways but I have a lot of that in my history as well. I know I do make it worse because I play with words and I forget that I'm playing with words and I should know when I'm recording videos but I say things like knee, thinking of gastrocnemius, one of the muscles in the calf. That has a silent, does it have a silent C? Not really, you pronounce it, you kind of pronounce it, but you kind of skip over it. But the knee has a silent K, but then we end up saying kni, and um, I say chime instead of kime, kime, kylus, cisterna, kylie, chime, kime. Stupid things like that, Brian. 
Um, again, students, I mean, that's a joke because students in exams, instead of writing brain, they write Brian and other anatomy teachers are with me on that. Um, the thing about language is it belongs to the people. You can write it down. You can be very descriptive and prescriptive and say, this is the word, this is how you spell it, this is how you pronounce it. But that will change as people use the words. And that's, this is what we see in language all around the world. It changes, it belongs to the people. And we'll see that in anatomy and anatomical terms, no matter how much we try to say, you've got to say it like this. Riddle me this. Um, one of the tiny bones in the ear is called the stapes because it's um, named after the stirrup, the Latin word for stirrup. Latin was spoken by the Romans, right? The Romans didn't have stirrups. Stirrups were invented some hundreds of years later. So, I guess I'm trying to make two points. One, I get it wrong, because I do get things wrong. I wish I was perfect and never made mistakes, because it's no fun making mistakes. But there you go. And the second thing is, it probably doesn't, wait, it doesn't really matter because even if you pronounce it perfectly, somebody who doesn't recognise that pronunciation won't get at first sight what it is you're talking about. And if you think pronouncing anatomical words is difficult, try learning Welsh. <laughs> Climbing on the Gower, it's it's all right. Terrible. Don't come here. <laughs> See how big this beach is. You have to walk to this beach, you can't like park and, you know, not walk to it. You can park and walk to that beach, but this beach, yeah, everybody who's here has had to walk some distance to get in. Good for them.